It should work. Really? With with extra added sound and it e should, numbers? It should work. In fact, I can kind of tell. Um, always expect the unexpected, says Harsey, <laughs> by the way. Also, for those of you who are unaware, um, last week I had stated that I was looking for moderators to really help us out during our shows. Harsey stepped up to the plate and is officially our very first official, 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 official moderator. So to you, Harsey, thank you so very much for stepping up to it. And you officially heard it here first, but there we go. <laughs> so, if we now have a little bit of audio, or indeed possibly quite a lot of audio, um, in our time zone, that would make it Monday night, that would make it time for MMO Buff. And it is episode 21, Raid Skill Development, with myself, the Mispa. I'm not sure I get to use the the pronoun on a name, but I just did. Hey, I'm tired. And it's not just me, of course. We have a pseudo. Hi, everybody. And yes, this actual show is completely inspired because a viewer named Adam B from YouTube, although he goes by other names in other locations, specifically said, how can I develop my raid skills? And I went, that is a Monday show. <laughs> I, I, I hear he goes by the name of Wendy on a Thursday, but I don't think we're supposed to mention that bit. I don't think so. But again, I'm getting a little bit of strange muffling sound from you. Does he sound okay to everybody else? I want to make certain because hmm. the last thing I want to have to do is try to post edit Mispa's voice because it might blow my computer <laughs> up. Well, I shall just um, filibuster randomly for a moment to let you do your sound checks. Yes. I'll apologize if you end up with a tired Mispa tonight. Um, according to my timesheet, I've done 117 hours work this week. That's mm. a bit much. Um, anyhow, we are now good to go. It's um, yeah, time to relax, kick back, and do the show. So the topic is raid skill development. And of course, a lot of people think raids just kind of happen. And yeah, they kind of know there's the raid leader in the background who his job is to stand there and yell at people, I think, or whatever it is they tend to do. We'll get to that bit in a minute. Um, but actually, every single person, I'm too loud, says Trosse. I can, I can help with that a little bit like this. Um, every single person has a role to play, and we're going to go through it, what it is, how it works, and how people can get better at it, because, you know, it doesn't kind of happen by itself. Mm, so, yes. before I get into ramble mode, which, which is a good idea. happen with this topic... Yeah, I, I may have to occasionally go, Mispa, I get to talk now. Mispa, Mispa, shut up. Isn't, isn't, isn't this the one-hour monologue show? Oh, dear God. No. No. No, it's not. Oh. No. However, what I, I want to do is I want to I jump in on this because both you and I have been raiding for a very, very, yeah. very long time. So we have a lot of experience under our belt in a variety of raids. What I want to hear from you is what was your first raid? Myself. Your very first uh, raid. What was your very first exactly raid experience what... like? And, okay. You know, and and when, the key thing that I want you to point out, because you can only learn. And anyone who says they yes. have 100% mastered rating, I don't think that's possible. I think it's a constant evolution of growth. But we can debate that if you so wish. Okay. But well, I'd like to know what mistakes you made, and I'd also like to know what your first raid was. Your assumptions well, I'm, 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 and things. I'm actually going to give you my first two raids, because there's a story here, and they link together. And they, they were three Ooh. days apart. My very first raid would have been either late 2005 or early 2006, and I think it was early 2006 in WoW. And of course it would have been uh, Molten Core, and this is a point in time when the guild was considering uh, a merger with another guild and, and doing some joint raid work, as we both kind of got to the point to go, yay, raiding, what's that? <laughs> and I, as uh, GM Enigma, was there, and this other group were there, and they were the experts. We, we, we were the new guys. And so we wandered along, and they had someone raid leading, and we wandered into Molten Core, where we proceeded to be disorganized, talk amongst ourselves, stand in the fire continually, die horribly, shout at each other, get thoroughly annoyed, and go, why on earth are we doing this for the duration of the experience? <laughs> oh, wow. Um, I'd, I'd love to tell you something different, 
but it didn't exactly go very well. Mm. And you got there blurry. Were a ton... There you go. I went blurry. You went blurry for a second. Blurry. Apparently, apparently well, that no. story was so much your camera was like, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> blur the face to hide, you know, the names of the quote unquote. Yeah, I, I, I see me going blurry. If I go blurry again, I, I have a deblurryization trick, but we'll get to that in a moment. Um, so it kind of didn't go that well, and unfortunately, in this particular raid, the method of raid leading involved if something is going going wrong, shout. Mm. If it continues going wrong, clearly shout louder. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, this God, reminds yes. me of a Monty Python sketch. You know, and I'm going to step away from my mic here. So I'm wandering around in Monty Python land in another country, and I come up to someone and I go. Hello, good sir. I'd like to buy some cheesy comestibles. And I get a strange look for some odd reason. I don't know why this is. So I step back a little and I go, Do you speak English? Yes, I'd like to buy. And we, we kind of know that this approach that we take the mickey of out of in a Monty Python sketch, why do people try it when they're raiding? I, I don't know. <laughs> So you went, and your experience was the quote-unquote antithesis yeah. of what a quality good raid is like. See, I that, that, that that's the thing. My first raid experience was also in Molten Core. Uh, actually, no, no. My first raid experience was on Nixia. Uh, uh -huh. I had I had run across a rogue who was on the server, and I loved the gear that he was wearing because he was wearing Bloodfang. And I'm all like, yes. oh my god, that is absolutely gorgeous. How do I get my hands on it? And he says, well, let's go get you a hood from Onyxia. I'll just have you join our raid group, and when it drops, it's yours. You don't have to think about it. He was incredibly helpful, and he was part of one of the top raiding guilds on our server at the time. But then he's like, let's go to Molten Core together. So I, I experienced Molten Core that way, but I remember being utterly confused, dying, not to whelps, <laughs> but I just die. I died because someone said, please move away from the tail, and I moved too far forward and got cleaved. Yes. That tells you I moved a little bit too far forward. <laughs> but I also remember the yelling, the screaming, the, you know, people need to shut up, stop talking, what are you doing, oh my gosh. But then I also remember the first time I led a raid. I led a Molten and Core raid. And we changed the game at that point in time because it was like what you were saying. It was full of yeah. yelling and screaming and people were like, I'm so sick of this. And we went, you know what? Let these two ladies, myself and one other person from the other guild that we were co-raiding with because we didn't have a big enough guild to do so, let us do the raid leading. Let us do the boss explanations. We never heard so much laughter. You know, when someone died, it was all, all right, who gets to teabag him? You know, it was, it was so much more light and we got further yeah. than we ever had in one night of Molten Core. And that's very, very similar to, the, to the, the counterpoint to that story I started with. So that was Enigma's first ever experience raiding under that banner. Few people had raided before, many of us hadn't. One of the, the great things was is we'd all grown up in the game together, so it was very much a shared experience. Mm -hmm. And that really does help pull people together. Um, so we were due to go back. And everyone had thought this was kind of disastrous, and we weren't. It wasn't particularly fun. Let's be honest. You're so doing it because you have to. It's all, part of the game's development. We all process. wandered back. Now, <laughs> let's let's put this in perspective as well. Um, I am a new WoW player. I don't know MMOs. I don't know raiding. I'm in my first ever guild. I happen to be leading it. <laughs> Stepping into Molten Core was the first time I'd ever been in a raid group. I'd only just leveled. The list goes on. Yet, the second time we got there, it was unilaterally decided that the joint effort didn't go particularly well last time. We didn't clear a single boss in Molten Core, and some of the people there had done so previously from the other guild. Did you not hug the Surgers? <laughs> I think we were too busy holding, hugging the Molten Giants. I think that was one of our problems. <laughs> no. However, I ended up raid leading on my second ever visit to a raid. <laughs> Which was interesting. What was more interesting is I am, I've been accused of being slightly logical at times. So we not quite went military, we don't do that, but we just went to a calm, collected, logical, analytical style where I effectively <laughs> kept up a running monologue so the whole time someone had something to focus on. And so, okay, can the group in group four move up to the left and ready? Three, two, one, and step. Okay, guys, you're holding your aggro. We're waiting for one, for two, for three, and we go. 
and this was the raid style that emerged on the first time I ever attempted this. <laughs> and we killed bosses. And we, on our first night, made progression through. And there was born, for me, the love of raiding. And yes, I will be honest, I am the strange person that loves and adores to raid lead. Mm. I love the moments of, I'm now going to make a judgment call. I'm going to decide to DPS. I'm going to decide not to DPS. I'm going to decide to, to ignore the phase and plow on through. I'm going to change the tactics mid-flow. And if I get it wrong, everyone dies. You know what? That's okay, because I'm going to back myself to get it wrong a low enough percentage of times to earn the right to keep making those judgment calls. There you go. Sound effects. Yeah, I was just going to say, you're going to see a hand pop out of the kitchen. Just this is a hand grab. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> expecting a cuckoo to come out of a clock. Um, it is entirely possible with who I have in this house currently. But yes, see... So, I, that, Those I was, were the first two raid experiences. The, the two kind of polar opposites, and it evolved from there. Well, yes, and I will have to state that, yes, Drusty Blood, you are darn right. Uh, Mispa is actually a Vulcan in hiding. For anyone who was <laughs> unaware, there is no such thing as emotion. It is all logic and, you know, live long oh. and prosper. I yes, tease. Okay. I, tease. I, tease. <laughs> I can't quite do that as easily as you. There we go. Really? Yeah, I do it like that. Yeah. Mizpa, unable to do the Vulcan handshake, even though he's a Vulcan. We, we kind of half got it. That, that's close enough, isn't it? Live long and prosper, Mizpa. <laughs> and there's a quick I just settled for, for the prosper. <laughs> you just settled for the prosper part. Uh, but yes, so a couple of things come to mind. I, When I started raiding, I didn't understand farming. I didn't understand raid prep. I didn't understand. I mean, I, over the years, I got the whole, you know, know the boss fight before you walk in until we started doing progression and there was no guide. You were your guide, <laughs> you know, but I, I hadn't, I didn't know any of that. And one of the things I want to make certain that we get clear in the show are some very, very, very key things that people should take away. But I want to start out with the stuff we have to avoid. And okay. the things that I think bring a huge, huge toxicity to an environment. So what I want to talk to you a little bit about is lull gear score <laughs> and lull deeps meters <laughs> because those two second, things. Second, second one gets slightly contentious, but it's how they're used. Well, see, that's, that's the thing. Uh, that's what I want to kind of point out. I mean, not all games have raid meters to that extent although most if they have some kind of add-on development there is a, a gear score or there is some kind of item level or there is some kind of actual meters that can be used to gauge people's progress and awesomeness etc and i want to make certain that you and i dispel and give our opinion on those two things before we go any further because i can tell you how many people are like i am so awesome at raiding because i'm always top on dps and I hear a duck yeah. in your background. You must be quackers. What am I listening to? I, I, I hear no duck. Does anyone else hear the duck? No, quack, no one hears quack, a duck. Quack, quack, quack. Oh, it's your buzzer. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> okay, so we've got cuckoos, we've got Vulcans, we've got ducks. I'm apparently quackers. In fact, I do have my duck with me because I love my okay. rubber duckies. But yes, so let's low, let's start. Let's DPS start to instead. dig it. Let's dig in because there's so much stuff there. They're probably at the gate. Oh, so it'll be them going. Where are you? <laughs> that's that's what's making the duck noise. I literally turned that on two minutes ago. It's being reformatted. <laughs> You're reformatting your duck. My phone, it's got the, this is the replacement oh. <laughs> old phone that I've just put the new SIM into that has just started ringing and I haven't yet been into the settings or anything else. I so thought yes, you were reformatting we your duck. I'm like, what are you going to put on it? So I walk into a room and there's a really low ceiling with a low, bu low bar there and it's got a sign on it saying duck or grouse. <laughs> okay. Oh, see, this is why we love you, Ms. Puh. Let us dig into the topic, because I see tons of questions and I do want to get to lots of them. And I'm actually waking up, which is, is fair warning, everyone. I'm now getting into the topic. 
what to avoid when raid leading? A number of things. The top of that list is actually, for me, egos. If people in the raid have a significant, look at me, I'm shiny, I'm wonderful, in terms of an ego, it's not going to help. If the person raid leading thinks they're the kashnizzle, I'm not quite sure what a kashnizzle is, but I'm sure there's people that think they are one, that's not going to help. If you're all there raiding because you personally want the shiny shoulder pads of doom and you don't give a flying schnickety knigget about anyone else, you're less likely to end up with the shoulder pads of doom. This is the secret that people don't seem to somehow kind of get. Mm. If the group goes in where the objective is to progress, the, the objective is to be the best that you can be in the group. And I'm going to find it difficult not to throw out enigmarisms here. You know, MMO Bath and Enigma are two different things, but we're talking about raid experiences, and mine come and are grounded in Enigma. So the two things, are, let's be really clear, Enigma, MMO buff, not related in any way, shape, or form. They are not. But I'm going to have to draw on it as a context for this show. That's so understandable. please, my apologies. Don't worry, I'll pull on my guild experience from pre when I was a part of Enigma, so it's not just all Enigma. So I'll just pick up what Osi said, and apologies for the uh, increasing number of non-words. <laughs> Basically, if you're raiding to be the great I am, if you're raiding to get stuff for yourself, if you're raiding so you can go look at me in the raid, and if you're raiding so you can show those around you why you're so much better than anyone else, you're raiding for the wrong reasons, you're probably not going to succeed a great deal, and if you do, no one's going to like you very much. It's not a recipe for great success. And you know who's normally most guilty of this? It's the people that are in the so-called positions of power in the raid. It's the guy doing the raid leading. It's the guy saying, I'm the main tank. They're often, not always, there's always exceptions, but yes. they're often the big culprits because you have to have something about you, good or bad, one of the extremes, to put yourself in that spot in the first place. Well, absolutely. I mean, when you first start looking at raids, who is it you look at? The people who have the quote unquote most experience, who have the badges on their name that you're supposed to follow directions from. You're going to learn your raid style from those who you raid with. You're going to learn your raid style from the people who you watch. And you may yeah. be someone, and I can speak from experience from the guilds that I have involved myself in in the past. Sometimes you will have somebody who is a lead because they're darn good at what they do but then you find out that in the end they spend most of their time putting down the rest of the class that they're supposed to be supporting or the role and you have to deal with that and it just creates a really nasty environment any kind of toxicity does and i think ego is one of the biggest causes of that yeah. kind of toxicity i really do so there's nothing see there, let me let me stress this there is nothing wrong with having an ego there isn't but there also needs to be a very good balance of modesty because confidence and ego can work together. But at the same time, if your ego is so egocentric that you are the one who the world and the raid revolves around, yeah, then I'm going to say gonna that that's really bad raid skills, not a good thing for you and, to focus on. And Harsey, can you make a note, please, in our lovely show notes? Um, the comment is, it's the healer's fault, exclamation mark. I want to pick up on that later. Fine. Okay, I'll keep my mouth shut on that. All right. Not yet. Well, so let let's, me let's dig. I've got about sixty points I want to make. So, do you want to carry on, or shall I dive into the things that are bubbling around my brain? Well, we've got to be very cautious as to how far you want to dig, because what we want to do is we want to give tips to raid well, and this comes exactly. from the beginner to the advanced to the raid leader, because they are completely different in some respects yeah. but at the same time there are some key things that fit for everybody so so let's break it down like the question this. becomes if i let you go on a rant how long will your rant last <laughs> and will i get a chance to talk <laughs> don't know and possibly those are the honest answers <laughs> but i will answer the questions <laughs> okay well how about this let me throw some questions at you first thing that comes to your mind when I say lol gear score, um, I say lol idiots. Okay. Now we should probably Why? back that up. Yes. Yeah. Why? What is gear score? 
Gear score is an arbitrary measure of stats or value represented by eye level in a given game. The game is well. People use gear score badly, in my opinion, as a way of going, what is the, the level of someone's gear? The problem is someone equates someone's gear as to their skill. Someone equates someone's gear as to their capability of doing something. I've been in the situation where I've seen someone saying, want someone to join Raid X, must have gear score Y. And the reality is, in order to have a gear score Y, you need to have already completed the raiding tier above the raid they wanted the person to join. Now, raid encounters aren't designed so that you have the gear better than the raid can drop to actually step through the gate. The minute someone's using gear score as an arbitrary invitation ticket, the point is lost. And it's point well, see, my problem with gear score tends to come from design implementations from game developers. If I can walk around as I'm going to go back to WoW because that's where I started my rating experience properly. And if I'm walking around and I happen to be a priest and, you know, I am wearing perps and one blue and I happen to have a paladin drop that I'm about to disenchant because I'm a disenchanter in my bag, it affects my gear score. And yet yeah. I can't wear yeah. it. I have no access to it. It just so happened to be put into my bag because I was present when that particular item dropped. And I have a problem with that kind of game design philosophy. It, it actually goes one step further in that any measure of uh, capability based on an average gear score or average itemization level, whatever term you wish to use, is fundamentally flawed. Because you all know that with game mechanics, there's scenarios whereby actually... You know, that blue trinket is still 10 times better it's for me BIS. than Absolutely. anything I can actually use. But of course, it's, it's 34 points lower on gear score. Now, the idea of developers making sane decisions to gate an instance on an average gear score where their desire is to gate base entry, I don't have a problem with. When community and individuals, and the reason being they, bake, they gate it at the utter minimum level of the scale. And it's basically, have you done your homework before you get in? But what happens is the community takes it and someone says, I want an easy run, I'll go higher. I want a really easy run, I'll go higher. Huh, you're a noob if you don't have this, I'll go higher. And all of a sudden, people are going, huh, you don't have eye level blah, you therefore suck. Now Utterly irrelevant. If I took one of our guys in chat that plays for D&T and asked <laughs> him to roll a new character and walk into a raid, would he suddenly suck? Well, that depends. He I, was telling I us about his wipes. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, Gear score is imperfect, but the real issue is how the community use it. I agree with that, especially as someone who has walked into a raid with people who were nowhere near the gear score that was quote unquote required to even do it, and we still nailed it and got our bears. I'm talking about you, ZA. You know, it's sometimes it's not the cure. Sometimes it is actually the ability for people to work together, which is one of the number one. It, it's almost like we should have a top five like we did when we were talking about the Holy Trinity. You know, one of the ones you must be able to do is work with others, listen to feedback and give constructive feedback, not just, oh, my God, you suck because you pulled that ad. So let's talk talk a little about stuff. And someone's raised a point that actually is the one I was looking to go on to a minute or two ago. And, and that is attitude. We talked about some negative attitudes that have an effect. And we want to talk about, well, how, how do you get into raiding? How do you do it well? How do you go from, hey, I'm a raider, to, hey, I raid? And they're not actually quite the same thing. No, no, um, they aren't. And mindset is the biggest single thing. So mm -hmm. there's lots of little compartments to this. And we could either start, we'll ask, we'll ask the channel, we can either start with raid structure, raid leadership and environment, or we can start with me, the individual Joe Blogs, hey, I want to raid. We Take can, your pick. We can let them do that. And while we do that, I'm going to pull a question from, or while we're waiting for the response from the channel, and, I'm going to pull a question or two from Am I allowed to eat whilst doing a show? Are there rules on that? You are actually allowed to eat because I know how busy <laughs> you have been. However, do me a favor. I'm come, 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 and don't do that. No, we won't do that. Of course you will. Don't worry. <laughs> no, um, but uh, Tainted, by the way. Hi, Tainted07. Hold on one second because it must be gone through. Hearts. Tainted07 says, 
as <laughs> as Mike show notes close. Darn you. Uh, did the guild manage to down the Fire Widow? You can see Ragnaros raid boss after Golemag. Um, we pretty much raided everything through to 40 man um, horsemen. Um, so, yes, unless you're talking about latest Firelands implementation of stuff where I haven't been playing well. Mm. So I can't tell you precisely what's in there. And Drasta Blood would like to know, how do you think DPS meters are going to play a part in Wildstar, considering the fact that you can't really max out your DPS when you're dodging Ooh. telegraphs and stuff? That, I have, to, I have to pause on here, because, you know, I'm kind of tempted to take that straight over to Cosmetronic, because that is a huge topic. But at the same time, it's all about DPS and stuff, so let's tackle that. Let me talk about it in a general sense. It, okay, you're not sure. going to like my answer here. DPS meters are good. World of Raids in a WoW context are better. Now, why wouldn't I like your answer? Other um, than the fact that it came out of your mouth, and it's my job as your co-host to yeah, officially yeah, like one. snark okay. on you and troll you. <laughs> a DPS meter is not a problem. What you do with a DPS meter can turn it into a colossal handicap for you and for those around you. I can agree with that completely. At a higher level of raiding, me not knowing exactly what DPS I'm pulling in any given situation is a problem. And to achieve that, I want to measure it. I don't want to guess. But that measurement does not just take place inside the raid, else I'm missing the point. It takes place on the training dummy. It takes place when doing certain exercises that we'll get to later. It takes place all over the show. But if someone's in one of my raids spamming DPS meters, and woe betide them if they're spamming DPS meters mid-fight, they're not going to be in one of my raids. There will become a point where I say, mm. I need some information. Can I get some numbers? And they are useful. And that's why I like World of Raids or other shared tools or setting up things correctly mm -hmm. so that I at a glance have information at my fingertips to make decisions. This boss has so much health. There is so much in terms of time available before X happens. How, what's, can we afford to run with six versus five versus four healers? Mm. The answer is a mathematical equation. Yes. And one of the inputs is what is the group average DPS. Where do I get that from? Well, it's not from a lollipop vendor. I have to get that from somewhere. There, and that see, means I have to record it. Well, see, that's the thing. Uh, most people, when they think about DPS meters, they look at it from the DPSer's perspective. Very few turn around and look at it from a healer's perspective or even a tank's perspective. Damage taken, healing received. No, well, Uptime. At all some point, essential. I actually want to talk here. <laughs> shush. <laughs> I can't believe I just told my guild leader shush. <laughs> and my raid leader. <laughs> and my co host and boss. That's great. But anyway, for me, one of the things that I find to be incredibly useful, and I use this back when I was in the guild that I had run um, back in WoW, we would have a collection of um, combat logs because no combat log is going to give you 100% of the information and we would pull out afterwards and we'd be able to build matrices and we'd be able to look at how things worked when we said in this particular fight in this particular trash pool that we needed CC done was it done you know even though we made it through we wanted to make certain people were pulling their weight and doing what they were supposed to do but when people start looking at meters as the end all be all I think that is the number one pit that a lot of people fall into. And I think one of the best things to come out of us doing the trilogy episode was the fact that nowhere once in the top five of any of them was it be top on the meters for X. Not once was that one of the nope. skills that was recommended. It's a, side, it's a side effect. It is a side effect, but at the same time, like you said, using it as one of the many tools available I completely agree with. I have a problem. There's there's something inside of me, and this goes back to the Hive Leaders video about healing. If you haven't seen our healing trilogy, you definitely go check it out. But it's that whole concept of that moment when you're a healer and you out DPS someone, it makes you feel a little bit like a god. It really does. But at the same time, you don't need to rub it into people's faces. 
You know, if I happen to run something and I find myself doing a heck of a lot more damage as a healer than somebody else, I might want to sit down with them and go, what are we doing wrong? Were you busy with utility or something else? But using it as a way to prove that your EP is bigger than somebody else's, it goes back to that whole problem we had with ego to begin with. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why we're stressing, be very, very, very careful about how you use the tools that are available to you. But be okay using them, just don't use them as the end all be all. Lol gear score. Lol. Um, Absolutely. Can we just link that comic to make a point? Absolutely. For those of you who've been very in the WoW world for a very long time, you may recognize the name Dark Legacy Comics. And they did this absolute brilliant thing where they're DPSing Rogue what's top on their meters. <gasps> and more than one meter. And voila. There is the comic in that particular case. Please read that. Um, the thing to take away from that is that what's important isn't your numbers. Mm. What's important is are you doing the right thing at the right time in this encounter to contribute towards the aims and objectives of the group. Being top mm. on the DPS meters can, is often not the same thing as am I making the maximum contribution towards the group winning this encounter. Yeah, it goes back to our discussion that we had in one of our previous shows about utility, about the importance of bringing utility back into a game of, you know, I need to uh, interrupt my quote unquote cycle or what have you to, you know, silence something or to keep something sheeped or to do X, Y and Z, because if I don't, then the raid's going to explode because somebody decided to stand somewhere they weren't. There's just so many. It's, it's about the mechanics of the fight in the end. But, you know, if you... Go ahead. I'm, 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 I'm kind of watching the clock and looking at the questions we have and at the comments we wanted to break out. Well, we've covered so the questions I... so far, unless people have more questions for us. I'm if looking at the questions, questions we asked ourselves. A a no, I mean, I mean the questions we asked ourselves. No, oh, yes. Not. See, that's the thing. In, we've these, started... in these show notes. Yes, we've started to go really high tech here at MMOPUF. <laughs> show notes, we've so, got them. <laughs> I'm going to su suggest that other than touching on the generality of a positive attitude, which we can cover more in another yes. show, we talk about the individual. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because there is more content that we can get through in 23 minutes. <laughs> absolutely. Ms. Pa, so my name yes. is Joe. Hi, I'm Joe. Hello, Joe. Jo. And I've never rated in my entire life ever like cool. for realsies. And okay. like I was told like I should like come to you and ask you like what what's the first thing I should do? Cool. Why do you want to raid? I was told that's like where all the cool stuff is like the lore because like I could totally have the lore explained to me as to like why we're fighting this big guy. And I kind of want to take him down because he totally destroyed my role playing scene like five weeks ago. And it's a good enough reason. You want that thing dead. And that's yes. really why the group is there. If someone's there because they want to run around and shout a lot and disrupt others, not a good reason. Yes, it does happen. So you want to raid. The first thing you've got to ask yourself is, are you as an individual prepped and prepared to help out with raiding? What, 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 is, what do you mean day, by prep? At the end of the day, raiding is where the group goes and achieves something that a person can't do by themselves. Yes, it sounds very obvious to state it, but that's a nice, simple way to break it down. You can't go in by yourself and kill X, because X will squish you. Oh. So you're going to take friends. And in this instance, more than a few friends. Okay. In the games I prefer, 39 friends. But I don't know what you mean by prep. What do you mean prep and prepare? So if you were an athlete and you were going off to compete in an event, let's say it was a 100 meter sprint, mm -hmm. I imagine you wouldn't just eat beef burgers all day and then just turn up in your normal work clothes to run the race. What do you mean? You'd probably do some training, you'd probably make sure you had suitable running shoes, you'd probably make sure if you were trying to be competitive you were properly hydrated, um, mm -hmm. and you'd make sure you got there a long time before the race started. <laughs> Showing up late. These are all help. very simple points, yes? Yes. Hey, I'm here to win the 100 meters, but it finished 25 minutes ago. Well, look at it from this perspective. You know, when you say to someone, you would like you to be prepped and prepared for a raid. And let's say that someone has never had that experience before. So we're looking at a proper yes. beginner. How would they go about in a game figuring out what okay. that really means? So the first thing you do is you look at the group of people you're raiding with and you talk to them before the raid. And you ask a very simple question. Hey. What do you expect of me? 
Because that answer is going to be different from group to group to group. There are basics that, in my view, everybody should cover, even if people say they don't need it, because it's good to be prepared. You're maximizing your investment into the group and into the group being successful. And it means you're pulling more weight, and if everybody does the same thing, then everybody fares better. But let's break it down, and I'll use the WOW context. Similar things apply elsewhere. You want to turn up in the best gear that you can conceivably get outside of the raid instance for attempting the raid instance. Okay. That might mean running a couple of extra dungeons to get that better pair of blue boots. It might mean making sure that you go and spend some tokens to get a few more gems to put into your slots. It might mean biting the bullet and replacing that really cheap chest enchant with that really expensive chest enchant that's only a 5% increase. Because here's a point that I personally go for that not everybody will agree with. But if I take the 2% on my feet and the 2% on my hands and the 5% on my back and the 1% on my... All of a sudden, I'm 10% better off. All of those things by themselves may not have been massive. But if I do every little thing I can do in terms of my character and my paper doll, I'm giving myself a mm. better foundation. And even if I only play around and update my DPS by 3%, let's assume it's a 20-person raid. Let's assume 19 other people do the same thing. Okay. That 3% adds up very, very fast. Yeah, that's true. Flip it on its head. If you don't, and 19 other people do, why are you standing back and sitting on their coattails? Well, see, this basically leads back to taking responsibility for your character in an MMO environment. It is so imperative, and it's it's it, it almost should become the catchphrase of our shows is just simply, you know, MMO buff, the analytical voice of online gaping, gaping, gaming, <laughs> where we stress. I can't believe I just said that. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, the online gaming, or the analytical voice of online gaming, where we stress you take responsibility for yourself. But in this particular context, if you are unaware of what is out there, you have brought up, again, one of, I think, is the most important tools in a raider's arsenal. Ask for yes. help. Anyone who sits there and ends up, and this is why I think we so, we stress so heavily at the very start, it's it's not about you in the end. It really isn't. Yes, you do get a benefit from it. You get to see something, but it's, it's really all about the group. And if you don't know, ask. And if you are so ego-driven and centric that nothing anyone says could ever help you become better, even if you spend 20 hours arguing a 2.5% increase versus a, you know, a decrease of this stat versus whatever I would never it is, do that. <laughs> don't even get me started. I know what you're like just in general. But, you know, when you have the kind of thing where the world revolves around you and you're unwilling to hear feedback and you're unwilling to ask for help, you are basically not preparing properly, in my opinion, for a raid. Your best arsenal, your best toolkit as a raider makes a difference what role you are playing, makes a difference what game you are playing, is ask if you are unsure. And it, it, it actually goes a step further. I'd switch the word ask to the word communicate. I would agree with which that. Which is both ask and listen. listen. Yeah, Find the person in your guild, your group, your fraternity, whatever it might be, who you <laughs> think is better than you. Look at what they're like. Look at their character. Look at what they do. Ask them about the choices they make. Mm. Ask them why they're making those choices. And learn. Set out to make your character better. Yes. If as a raid leader, and I've had this many times, I have the choice between someone that's got some awesome gear, a ton of experience, and a bad attitude, and someone that's never, ever stepped into a raid instance, the majority of the time, I'm actually going to take that new person. Because I can fix someone's gear. I can work with someone to make them a better player. I can give someone experience. I can't buy loyalty, but if I can, I'm not about to try. Loyalty bot is not and loyalty. I can't fix someone's attitude if it's bad without a lot of work. Mm. Someone comes to me with a good attitude, a good mindset, a desire to learn, 
I will spend every hour in the day and all the help I can muster, as will the entirety of any guild that I'm part of, excuse me, to get things done and to get things done well. well see, and I... I can say now that people that have never, ever raided before, you know, were involved in server first kills in Naxaronis because that's what happens. Now, I'm going to pull, we have quite a few questions, and I think it's a really good idea for us to shift into the questions now. This particular topic, I think, may actually end up having to cover a couple of shows, mainly because it's such a big, big, big topic. It really is. Rating isn't just simple uh, login, go to instance, sign in, press button, boss dies, uh, get loot, move out. It doesn't work like that. There is an awful lot to make a raid a raid. But I want to tackle some of these questions. The first one I actually want to pull directly from the chat, which just got smacked in my face, because I think it's an important thing to look at, because it takes away from just simply, you know, raiding and actually moves into human nature. So Ninichu asks, do you mm -hmm. believe that anyone can become a decent raider if they're willing to learn and prepare? Or do you believe that there are actually some people that are just not raiders? And this is a good question. Because... I believe firmly that 98.6% of people can become fantastic raiders. 98.6? Yes. I thought it was 98.8. Uh, it depends on the day of the week. So... There are some very, very low low percentage number cases where someone's going to have to work harder than someone else. And in some yes. cases, it would stop them reaching the highest of bars. But it doesn't mean they can't become a decent raider. I'm going to exclude attitude from this test. Because if you've got a bad attitude, well, frankly, that's your fault. can help you overcome it, can explain why that's the case. But having a bad attitude is not a fundamental disability. That's a choice. You can choose to carry that disability or not in a raiding context. We will say that's now, true for the majority of the time. Because hey, there, there are... can be external life issues and things that you can get help with and yada, yada, yada. Well, yes. no, I, I only but say that because fun I have fundamentally... someone who uh, was a very brilliant person, but they occasionally had triggers and it was nothing they could do. It's because they had a bullet that's in their right. brain that was removed. So, that's but yes. Right. <laughs> and good I think and bad times the time. and all the rest of it. Hey, see, 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 see my 99.6 or whatever number you care to come up with. Um, <laughs> what, are the, what are the exceptions? Someone whose hardware and lag scenario does not allow them to react in a sensible time, no matter how alert they are. If you've got, and I'm not talking about 400 MS, but if you've got 14,000 MS and you're playing on a 386 on a black and white two-inch monitor, you are going to struggle. Would you bring them I'm to raid? It, there's no... Depends on their attitude and what they could actually achieve, the level of the raid, the level of the competition, and the role they were doing. If they'd hmm. shown that despite the handicaps, they could do what they needed to do to make a fair contribution, yes, I would. Fair enough. But that's me. Okay. At right. the same time, I would say to them, if their environment ever became a handicap they couldn't get past, they would have to accept for the good of the larger group occasionally being dropped from raid. And the two things would go hand in hand. Yeah. I, I, I can totally accept and agree with you on those particular points. And I will move us forward now. Uh, let's see. Flaming Ruby asks, on a boss fight, what is more important about you? Activity meter or DPS healing meter? Which one's more important? And add this one when the boss is dead and when it's not. Okay. Um, I have to ask a question back, first of all. Do you mean in the context of a general raider, or do you mean in the context of a raid leader? And there's your question flaming, and once we get that back, we'll go back to your question and respond to it. Harsey would like to know our thoughts about DKP. And are there options for fair loot distribution? That is going to be a separate episode. In fact, that'll probably be our episode next week. I mean, we were looking at doing something in particular, but I think it is worth us looking at the various uh, loot distribution systems and actually explaining pros and cons and why some things work for some groups and some things don't work for others. Would you agree to that, Mispa? I would, but I would also add that there mathematically we can show that some systems are more fair than others no system is absolute and a good system combined with common sense is ultimately the best solution 
So basically, you are promising to bring to me Venn diagrams and lots of charts and numbers. If you want to Venn diagrams and charts, I will bring it. I'll, I'll tell you what. I will make certain to pick that for our topics when I know that you aren't working 120-hour weeks. Because then I really want you to bring all of those things forward. I'm too busy or else I'd do it myself. But anyway. Okay. Tainted. Uh, again. Again. Hearts to the tainted. Uh, would like to know. <laughs> Darn you, stop this. <laughs> uh, the thoughts on world buffs and consumables and flasks and scrolls, are they actually good ideas or bad ideas within a game's Depen context? Implementation and attitude. Let me give you the two sides of the coin quickly before I give you my own personal view. Um, world buffs that are introduced, some people can start to rely on them and use them in a manner that wasn't actually intended with the game design. That said, if someone is performing effort i.e. work in a game context to make themselves better and then they make use of that for the good of the group, I'm all for it. I am very happy with some encounters that are actually designed with those in mind. The downside of that, of course, is it becomes a norm and starts to be utilized in a way that game designers may not actually have anticipated or expected. I still oh, remember yes. running around farming all sorts of things in a uh, fire, weed and black lotus and insane amounts of things back in the day that took hours and hours and hours in the place where all the imps were and the name of which eludes me badlands just uh, possibly just to get those momentary buffs for using sort of pre-pull and that sort of thing yeah uh, is it needed possibly if you're actually competing for firsts and stuff it becomes part of the meta game but it isn't necessarily same it becomes a hey you can't walk in here because you don't have this particularly if the fight design doesn't actually need it. So it's down to implementation, how it's used, how it's controlled. For certain things, it adds a layer of complexity and effort required to reap the rewards that I actually like. Yes. See, I remember Felwood. I remember farming the things That's that it. only spawned every like four wor or four hours. If you were lucky, you had to be right there I'm on the I'm quite sure it was and... 4,617 hours apart. So, I timed it. It was some crazy, stupid thing. But I remember actually... I farmed enough to make the one that let me dodge and we had um, the fight in Molten Core where you had the four priests and the guy standing there. I can't remember what his name is, but you had to separate the priests out and constantly have your interrupts stopping the priests so that you guys could kill each individual priest down, etc. before you Pull killed back him. come around the ledge, but yeah. Yeah, so, so, something along those lines. It was one of those crazy things. And our tank hit the ground. And um, I... the. I was a rogue and I was right underneath the tank on threat so it turned on me popped evasion popped what I farmed and we were able to take it down before I finally died because I couldn't do the dodge anymore and that was a successful takedown but it was because the resource was there for me to use um, but at the same time I think it matter it's we have to go back to game development and design like you said if something is used against what was the design there for, I kind of have to ask why the developers didn't think that wouldn't become normal in the first place, especially when you start dealing with something where there is such a thing as a metagame. So uh, I think players will always find things game designers can't anticipate. I mean, let's be honest, oh, there is gosh, X yes. numbers of game designers. There is X squared multiplied by the power of number of games players. This, this is very, <laughs> so very it's, true. So it's not realistic to expect them to catch everything. And it's fair to say older implementations had more issues. Newer implementations, a lot of games deal with that well, apart from some games that are just badly designed. But that's another story. Yeah, game design is a topic unto itself. Um, Avid Guru would like to know, what do you think of the role of class leaders and role leaders or role leaders and lead yeah, healing lead, etc.? Helpful, etc. too much delegation. I want to answer this first because you have talked your little buns off. It is my turn to speak up on something. <laughs> hey, I've let you basically answer I'll questions and I've not even given too many thoughts. So when I was doing a progression rating... Um, we tried both methods. We tried having a class lead and we tried having a role lead. We actually found a role lead to be much, much, much more successful at the top end and then having class leads underneath for people who actually really understood what they were doing so they could talk to people who spoke Warlock or talk to people who spoke Paladin or talk to people who spoke whatever class that they were having to do. However, 
In order to do that, in order to have any kind of structure in a rage, you need to have people willing to step up and take responsibility for it. You need to have people who don't find it a, too much of a burden and who actually enjoy the teaching experience. Because there is nothing worse than having somebody in a class role where you have someone coming up to you where you happen to be raid leader going, I keep trying to speak to my class lead, but they just don't have the time for me. They never respond to me. They'll talk to Joe Schmo, and as we found out, Joe is new because, you know, they're perfectly fine teaching them, but here I am trying to dig a little deeper, and they just don't seem to care. So there needs to be a certain type of attitude you pick. I think there's a purpose for both, and I only state that because I know how we happen to have things certainly structured within <laughs> our guild, but having tried out both, when we had class leads only, we found that people were not taking their specific roles as seriously until they had somebody else who was responsible for the DPS lead. And in fact, we broke it down even more in WoW. We had the tank lead, we had the heal lead, we had the melee DPS lead, and we had the range DPS lead. That's how we broke it down. And you know, we had people like angry penguins and toasted puppies for our ranks and things like that, which was brilliant. We had great names, but having that kind of breakdown meant when you turn to your, we'll say your DPS lead, and you're like, I'm having problems staying behind this boss. The range leader didn't sit there and go, I have never had that problem in my life. I spend so much time in the distance as a hunter shooting things. I've never had to worry about it. So we tried to group people together who had the same experiences so they could teach each other. And we found that actually worked really, really well for what we were doing. So in my opinion, there's a purpose for both. I do believe it does depend on the type of raid you're accomplishing, how many people are involved, because if it's a 10-person raid, it's kind of a little pointless to give everybody a lead. So there's <laughs> got to be a different way to structure yourself. But, you know, you have to play around. And I think raid groups need to be willing to learn, try new things, and if they don't work, go, well, this worked from it, so we'll keep that, but this didn't, so let's kick that out. You need to be willing to adapt another tool in your kit and your arsenal, folks, right there. I'll let you have your so, say. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I'd agree, um, in part. The both are viable, both are needed. The size of the raid group, the complexity of the raids you're encountering, the level of competition that you're actually undergoing are all key. What's more in key is the attitude of the individual people involved. And here is the most key point of all. The role of a raid, uh, ro the role of a raid lead, a class lead, or a role lead largely takes place in between the fights and outside of the raid. I agree with that. Not in the raid. That's the communication, that's the delegation, that's the pass information around amongst the group that is the icing on the cake. The work takes place outside. If you have a class lead that turns up to go, hey, I'm the shiny class lead, look at me, I'm leading the class, and then they're unavailable the rest of the time, you have the wrong class lead, get rid of them. Yes at least as a class lead. Mm, absolutely. So your key point you said is why is someone there? They're there so they can share the benefit of their experience. But let me flip this for a moment and approach it from a raid leader's perspective. We fight something. It kills us. Three, we have X healers. And we don't manage to keep the tank up and the group wipes. Hmm. I say, well, can we have some more healers? And the DPS go, well, no, none of us can change to healing because we're right on the wire for the enraged timer. And actually, we need more DPS. So can we have less healers? And then the healers go, but, 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 but we can't possibly keep the tank up and we need more healers. And round and round and round we go. That is where, in between the fights, one, look at the numbers that hopefully are being used the right way. And two, you turn around and say, right, healing lead. In a private conversation, private channel, whatever else, do the healers suck today, or are I being asked to do impossible stuff? Is this in response to Zedman's awesome comment of, I thought that healers are always to blame? It's, it's going it's to touch on it. And the best healing lead is in the world is the one that can go, today we suck. Today Joe Bob isn't on his game. Poor today Joe. we're not getting it right. And can also turn around and go, we're doing everything we can, the tank is being a bleep. He's not standing out the fire. Or, there's no way we can maintain this for this long. The DPS need to kill this thing. 
And because he can consistently go, today we're wrong, you can trust him when he goes, today we're right. And that is where the trusted role leads, tanking, DPS, healing, shine. They know when they're getting it right, yeah. they know when they're getting it wrong, they know the jobs of those under them. It means as a raid lead, I can talk to two or three people to make decisions and ask the questions I need to of others, not try and communicate with 39 people that all have their own opinion, because that does not lead in a raid to a healthy raid environment. Outside of a raid, we'll discuss it all day long in the raid, we're there to get the job done. I, I agree with that. And we will leave off on this one last comment. Um, or I should say this question that has come in from Helza123. Because I think, if anything, to end a conversation about raid skill development, it goes beyond just knowing your rotation. It goes beyond knowing a boss fight or attempting a boss fight or listening to the raid leader or being the raid leader and keeping a cool, even keel attitude and stuff like that. It goes into social skills. So the question that we have coming through, what do you think you should do about people who throw temper tantrums and quit during a raid? AKA they just leave the raid and raid quit but not the guild and guild quit. Now, I'm going to start off by saying you need to tune into the campfire, which is on Tuesdays here, as we discuss guild structures and we do tackle topics like this. I am also going to throw out there, if I have set up an environment or a guild or even a put together group for a raid, heaven forbid I take that step, I've done it before, but heaven forbid I do that, if I allow people to have that kind of attitude then i'm fostering a toxic community and that's wrong but if this is a, a case where i have a guild and they're in my guild and they basically throw their little toys out of the pram or the cot depending on what country you're from because they didn't get their way they're not going to be in the guild because all they're thinking about is themselves. And if all they think about is themselves, they've already gotten multiple X's through their name because the ego is not the point. If you just want to have those plus 15 shoulders of pink power, go somewhere else. I don't want to see you. Well, I, I, I have a simple solution for that problem. Don't allow it. Kick them out. It, invo it, 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 invo it involves a vice to hold their mouth, their mouth open, some fishing wire, and a live chicken. <laughs> Great. They never do it twice. <laughs> Great. I like this. Violence. No. The, no. The, the, the first thing you do is you communicate. Is someone having a bad day? Did, let's be, let's yes, be really honest you, here. You this know. is true. Did, 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 did someone's... Someone they know just get hurt in a car crash that night. Are they having well, see, a torrid time of it and it's just saying. the final straw? And it could be they do something horrendous and it's out of character and you go, Whoa. Well, in this so case, it's throw always... a tantrum. Yeah. Someone could, I've, I've seen someone normally very stable, very normal, very fantastic, throw a tantrum out of the blue after two years of knowing them and storm off mid-raid. And the answer was stuff happening outside of raid that just happened to be affecting them that night. So the first thing you do is you find out what is going on. Is this a one-off that's truly a one-off for extenuating circumstances? Or is it a pattern or an attitude? If it's a pattern or an attitude, you deal with it. How you deal with it depends on the reaction, your social constructs, your guild, yada, 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 yada. From a raid leader's perspective, they are damaging the raid by being there. Don't let them be there. Fix the problem. Oh, they've apparently fixed it themselves by just walking out of the raid. Yes, but then they've also chosen not to walk back in next time there's a raid. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it all depends. I, I do think it, it really does depend. Every community or guild has a structure that, or a, I should say a level of tolerance that they will accept for behavior. And if you foster a community where communication is key, you will know in that particular case, that person will come to you later and go, dude, I just flew off the handle because my yeah. cat chased my dog upstairs and demanded a sacrifice of small rodents. And I had no way of saving my dog. You know, and then someone had to go and mention that they wanted to save rats. And of course, that's going to, you know, piss me off because here this, you know, I can't get rats to save my dog, as the case may be. That's kind of understandable. You've opened, you have a community that has that kind of communication involved. But if you are with a group 
And someone is repeatedly being, for lack of a better term, an utter jerk. Or as we have termed now a coccyx on our particular show, if they are being that bad, that they are a lowered part of the spine, the tailbone kind of a thing, why are you keeping them there? Why are you allowing this to foster? And if you, if the answer tends to be because they're, you know, the guild leader's best friend, maybe the, the answer for you is, why are you <laughs> staying there? Guild leader. <laughs> or why are you staying in that kind of community? But yes. So, let's let's touch on a couple of couple of quick things. Time. One thing I want to just bring up because it hasn't come up yet, and I've seen it happen again and again and again, and it's damaging. Is the person in the guild who's popular, who's got some great gear, therefore they're always in the raid. That's not balanced. Mm -mm. You need to bring the group up in line with each other. I agree. You need a balanced raid force. Feeding gear. I'm actually all for making an MT role and giving that person what they need to help the, get the group do stuff. But any form of favoritism, even if it's based on perceived expertise, is in the long term damaging. Doesn't mean you don't give the first drop of something to someone that would make the best use of it. That's just common sense. That's loot distribution, which is another show. Indeed. I'd also want to touch on one thing that we kind of thought I was going to get into, but the clock is ticking. And, okay, you can prep for raid by attitude. You can prep for raid by having the right stuff. You can prep for raid by communicating and asking questions. You can prep for raid by being there on time. Your raid leader will love you. However, you can also prep for raid by actually doing stuff in a group. Yes. So, a few quick examples. We're trying to raid as the guild. We're trying to get better. We run into things like healer rotations. What do we do? We go to Molten Core, we take our healers, we take a couple of our tanks, we take all the gear off them, we throw them in the lava, we have two healing crews take turns doing healing rotations, practicing it, getting it right, seeing how long they can maintain it for. We vary the gear on them, we start putting opposing force, forces burst DPS on them at different times from the other faction, and we create an environment to test and practice the mechanics we need to use in raid. We get a group of people and I start running around like a maniac in different directions and the whole group has to stay within two inches of me wherever I move, whenever I move with no warning. We practice moving together. We go into the Gurabushi arena and we come up with skills to do with healers and DPS and keeping people alive and keeping people dead. We practice the mechanics we need in the raid. Why wait for that three hour slot where you've got to kill stuff to get somewhere to then try and practice something when you can create and manufacture a way of practicing at another time? Mm, that is the key right there. It is the willingness to work together to achieve a goal. Now, what it takes to achieve that goal, maybe you are in a group that just wants to only practice when you're actually in there. But if you really want to push it, be willing to step outside of the raids and do more. And if your group doesn't want to do it, you can find things to do as an individual. Yes. I used to run around oh, yes. kiting demons and worms and trying to go, well, what can I deal with? How many targets can I control? What is what? Because mm -hmm. there's no way I was going to go into a raid saying, hey, I'm, I'm here raid leading and not be able to do at least a good a job as anyone else around me in, in terms of actually doing my job in the raid. I and it's something I just look for everyone to do. You can practice raiding outside of raid. There's a myriad of ways. Yes, and if you understand a certain boss mechanic or you're, you're, you know, you're not doing world first, because world first tend to have a different level of what they end up having to go through, because they're not trying to avoid the raids and prep for that raid night. They're pretty much usually in there every night of the week, for the most part. But, you know, and that's a whole debate for another thing. Don't go there, Miz. I know what you're thinking. Uh, the the, the one-liner, some our... of the most fun I've had in Raid is when there are no guides. Walk in there, poke it with a stick, work it out. Yes, and if you really want to understand some thoughts, go back and watch our episode on casual versus hardcore versus pond life, which is actually a kind of interesting show from us. But, um, you know, when it comes to raiding, if you enjoy the feeling of working together as a group and you want to take on challenges that require more than just you, that require that next level of organization, 
when a game designs an encounter in a raid properly, I have to preface it with this because we are aware of some games where the design philosophy for certain raids is literally boring and completely goes somewhere against it's some of the exceptional stuff, and some are incredibly exceptional but if it is set up properly and you really get a kick out of requiring those 39 other people those 71 other people working together and then you want to get that risk versus reward versus dopamine rush there is no other non-illegal drug like it just gonna say that endorphin rush when you've taken down something that you have worked so hard for and yep. you guys did it and it was just that moment there is this feeling that just hits you from top to bottom and your heart just goes and it is amazing so for those of you who are not actual raiders you might want to give it a go <laughs> yes it's an awful lot of fun. Having said that, if your experiences are bad, assess those around you. Have you had bad experiences because of yes. bad groups? There's all too many of them. And you know what? If you can't find a good group, look at what it takes, look at what's involved, look at the attitudes needed and make one. Come to the campfire. Work for us. Tuesday night. <laughs> Yes. Okay, so we've covered an awful lot in this show when it comes to um, to rating, and we've run a little bit over, but what I'm going to let you do, Mizpa, your top three skills or ways to do raid skill development, the top three right off the top of your head. And they may not be in necessary order, because in my opinion, when you do raiding, everything kind of has its importance. We'll, we'll, we'll go three, two, one in importance order, actually, because I think, I think I can tackle it that way. Ew. My third most important is actually preparation. And that covers a huge gamut. Mm. And most people will be surprised it's as low as three. That doesn't mean that it's not vastly important. It's just third on this list. Okay. My number two does cross over into it, and that's practice. But that, for me, covers such a wide area. So if you're practicing your rotation on a target dummy to make sure it's instinctive if your class has one, if you understand all the intricacies of your target prioritization, if you're practicing your CC and, and working out how to actually test skills you need in raid, out of raid, that's what I mean by uh, practice. The number one raid skill that is totally generic all people is awareness. Be aware of what's in front of you. Be aware of what's behind you. Be aware of what you've been asked to do. Believe it or not, be aware of what you are doing. Be aware that you're now in front of the tank and about to pull aggro. Be aware that you're in the wrong place on the threat meters. Be aware that you're not doing the job that you should be at this moment in time. And if you're doing that on purpose, be aware of why you are and know that it's a smart choice that pushes towards the aims of the group. Be aware of what you're doing, how it's happening, and take responsibility for your own actions. It's much more than you're about to pull the whelps. Ah, now see, you've done that in that order, and I am now going to throw in mine. Mine is a little similar to yours, though my number one is vastly different. Your number one is my number two. <laughs> for me the preparation does involve things like practice already so i don't need to group those together in my opinion um screen screen it just says listen listen to the raid leader now that is actually part of awareness which is number two if you are in see that's the thing if you are doing a raid and your raid leader says everyone stand in the lava lava even though you know what's going to kill you do it just do it because they might be testing something. Just just whatever they say, do it. Because the raid leader is there to take responsibility for the good and the bad. There you go. But my number one, my number one is attitude. And it will always be attitude. Because to me, the social interaction you have with everyone who is around you, whether it is your fellow DPS or healer or tank, whether it is your lead or your lead or the people who are following you, it makes no difference whatsoever. It is your attitude. And if you do not come in with a good attitude. If you do not come in with a willingness to learn, I think no matter what you do, your rate experience is going to be crap. Because if you go in and you're all, you know, 
you know, like I was saying earlier, the, e the EP thing is bigger than somebody else's. If you start putting people down, the morale drops in the raid that destroys a raid, and it, it, period. If you go in there and people are never going to reach what you believe to be the ultimate level of gear score, lol, DPS, lol, whatever you want to do, you're making the experience crap for yourself because you're holding people up to imaginary numbers that cannot be met because of some good design thing or maybe someone just didn't have a chance to get that piece of loot or whatever. But if you remove that and pay attention to the fact that human beings are human beings and you are social creatures and we work together and you come in with a willingness to learn, to listen to what's going on, to teach even and be supportive of your fellow raider, you are going to find the raiding experience to be second to none whether you are raiding in a pvp match or whether you are raiding a boss against npcs what cohesion you pull together as a group for attitude will be everything at the end so that's my number one but yes and there's there's many ways to get the job done and a lot oh, of gosh, what you yes. need to do and, and how depends on what group you're in, what you're trying to achieve, where you're at. There are about a thousand other topics I still want to go into on this, but hey. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing. One of the things we're going to be starting to do here on Mondays, by the way, is pulling back some of our series because of the fact that we want to hit so many topics and we don't want to just scratch the surface. We want to dig deep. We want to get bloody and find out why or how or what have you. We are going to be bringing back the series. So if there is a particular topic you really, really, really want us to go into, and you're not just wanting to settle for a one hour discussion where it is entirely possible, I have to keep reminding Mispa that it's my turn to talk. <laughs> um, basically, go to MMABuff.TV in the upper right hand corner, click on contact, send a mail in, and I will Build the structure so that we can cover it all. I mean, honestly, when you're talking about rating as a whole, it is so big of a topic. We can only scratch it in one hour. But we've got many hours in the future. And look, we get show notes and everything. Yeah, if you notice, <laughs> lol DPS is in there. Lol DPS meters, lol gear score. And etc. But yes, we are going to want to dig into it. But... We're also not just going to be talking about these things. In fact, I'm wondering if I want to wait for the um, the loot distribution when it comes to um, PVE. Because PVP, as we have discussed before, tends to be a little different because you tend to work, you kill, you get your, your currency up in a particular game, and then you can go buy the loot for yourself from whatever NPC vendor happens to be there. It's not as, like, you kill X boss, you get certain loot amount drops, and then you have to figure out how to distribute it, etc. So we'll do a PvE loot thing. I kind of still like our topic for next week. What do you think? Shall we stick with our topic that we have for next week? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it post. It depends how much prep time we have. Uh, I do like the topic. Um, there's also a ton of stuff I'd reading. like to. There's a ton of stuff I'd like to get into here that we haven't really touched on yet. So we haven't, for example, talked about the structural mechanics of a guild running a raid force on purpose because that was not where we're at. This is how can I, I as an individual get better? That would be at a raid. good follow-on. Uh, fine. Fine. If you want to, if you want to talk we'll about, we'll see what people I, say. I'll, I'll tell you we'll what. We'll see what the response is. How about if we make that part of our discussion when we have you on the campfire as the guild leader of Enigma? We can do that. <laughs> do you want to hang around and have a quick post show? I'm actually strangely awake, even though I shouldn't be. I know. So I'm going to eat lasagna in front of the camera because I'm starving still. That sounds good. Well, let's, yeah, let's, answer any number of questions. Let us do our basic disappearing act. Um, hello, Tattooed Walrus. Hello, Katamari. Hello, Dross to Blood. Hello, Helza. Hello, Nakalu <laughs> thank you, Katamari. Nukalara. Um, <laughs> thank you to absolutely everyone. Um, <laughs> pull rank, pseudo. I, 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 think, I think you'll find that's the other way around, screen. <laughs> No, no. See, that's the thing. It, it, as a council member, it is my job to keep you in check. Mm. And that is why I am there, because I will literally fight you tooth and nail, even going into fisticuffs if we have to in order to beat up issues to do things. But yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you do our lead out. I'll, I'll, I'll swap a thingy. And then I'm going to run upstairs real quick because I hear the cat meowing his head off. And then I'll come back, but I'll leave the cameras on. But anyway, so say your goodbyes. 
So, with a, a great uh, topic, thank you for your input, thank you for your time, we have come to the end of things. This, of course, is, as it somehow got referred to earlier, the MISPA, talking about raiding along with the pseudo, who now will be forevermore known as the pseudo. So, while I'm being wary of the wrath of the pseudo, so she can run upstairs and deal with the meowing cat, it's time for the pseudo to say goodbye without laughing if the pseudo can somehow manage it. So, the pseudo, over to you. The Toodle Pip. <laughs> and this is Miss Burr signing off. Thank you for joining MMOBuff.tv. Catch us all over the place. Social media, on the website, on the Twitter sphere, and in other places. See you on the post show. Greetings, everyone. Pseudo here. Thank you so much for watching episode 21, Raid Skill Development, our Monday MMO Buff podcast show. This particular question was brought to us from one of you. If you have any questions that you would like us to tackle, leave us a message below. Also, remember to like, share, subscribe, you know, all those good things. Doodle pip. <laughs>